We hear a lot these days about the need to maintain a proper work-life balance. Work comes at us so thick and fast, we've got to hold it back and then balance it out with life. And lately, we've seen a lot of conversation and discussion around this because uh, Jack Ma, head of Alibaba, has said that he thinks that a 996 schedule from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week, is the way to go. That if you really want to achieve something, you've got to dedicate um, nine to nine, six days a week. And then there's a lot of chatter about, no, we need to balance uh, work with life. The research actually says that all of this is a red herring. There's no such thing as work-life balance and we shouldn't strive for it. Number one, because the categories are wrong. It's like work is sort of bad and toil and, and life is sort of good and you need to balance the bad of work out with the good of life. But of course that's weird because work is part of life. So you can't really balance it. And of course there are some things in life that are hard and there are some things in life that you love and there are some things at work that are hard and some things at work that you love. So balancing it out is, is weird. And besides which, could you ever find that balance? I mean, who's ever found that perfect moment of balance? And if one day at 3 p.m. in the afternoon you did find that perfect balance, what would be going through your mind is nobody move. Everyone just stay right where you are. It's perfectly balanced. Don't move. Balance is not only a precarious state, it's also a static state. If you ever found it, you'd go, shh. And of course, that's not a good metaphor for life. Life is movement. Life is process. Life is moving through a thing called life and then doing so in such a way that you can make a contribution and make a contribution in such a way that it invigorates for you so you can keep doing it. So as we think about that, that's our challenge. It's not finding balance, it's moving through life of which work is a part in such a way that it actually invigorates you. Then really, our two categories shouldn't be work and life, they should be love and loathe. There are specific activities and situations and people that, that you love or that I love and they're different, really different. You may love confrontation, I may hate it. You may love empathizing with the emotions of other people, I may hate it. So what you love in life, in work, at home, in your community, with your family, those particular activities or situations that you love are really unique to you, aren't they? So the first category is what are those? Whether they be at work or whether they be at home, what are the activities or situations or contexts that you love? And then of course, what do you loathe? What are the things that drag you down and, and drain you and bore you? And if you never had to do them again, it would be a day too soon. What are those? And once you've got those categories in mind, you should be deliberately trying to imbalance those. So the real challenge in life is not to find work-life balance, it's to find love, loathe, imbalance. If you can do that, if you can take really seriously what, what in the book Nine Lies About Work we call your red threads, the activities that seem to be made of material that invigorates you somehow for no good reason other than the clash of your chromosomes. What are those activities or situations or contexts that, that lift you up? Can you identify what those are? And then can you deliberately imbalance your life toward them? Boy, if you do that, you not only make a contribution in the world, but you do so in such a way that allows you to continue to do it.